Jerry Cataret versus Levon Saganashvili. If Jerry is coming super strong, the setup will be critical. Levon has to be committed to moving forward, not backward or sideways. If he gives Jerry even a little room to get behind his arm, Jerry can make it a very difficult day for him. I don't know if Levon or anyone could pull Jerry out of that position. The key to the match is Levon's approach. If he stands tall, moves forward, and isn't intimidated by Jerry's size, he can smash Jerry like Erms did. But if he's slow, off the start, and tries to lazily back pressure top roll Jerry, he's in trouble. It's going to require more forward pressure than back pressure. If Jerry gets his fist into his peck, tight to his body, it's very difficult to get him out of that position. I can see Levon having a hard time. For Levon, shoulder pressing Jerry is easier and safer than top rolling him. The worst thing for Levon is to make a mistake top rolling and getting stuck in a long match. Levon needs to concentrate on the center of the table and not let Jerry get off the top. The safe bet is still Levon. He's the strong favorite. But I wouldn't be surprised if Jerry does to Levon what he did to Kurdecha. Brian Shaw versus Eddie Hall. Brian seems so powerful with such a big and long frame and strong hand that I wouldn't even try to top roll him. It takes him longer to build his frame and be stable side to side. The easier approach for Eddie is to go wrist to wrist. If Eddie has the framework to do that, I think that's the approach he should take. Neil Pickup has been showing Eddie this back pressure thing, but I don't think that will work against Brian. I've seen Brian training and his ability to come across the table and his hand and wrist strength will shut that down completely. Brian is tall, with strong hands and long limbs, so it will be very difficult to top roll him. It will be easier to hook him and see how stable his upper arm is sideways. From what I can see, it looks like to me, Brian is gonna win. He'll be able to control Eddie, and especially if Eddie just tries to top roll, if he does what he's been showing in his video footage of just going back pressure, I think Brian will easily shut that down. Brian looks very comfortable when he gets slightly behind his arm. As long as he doesn't rush, he can take it to a point where Eddie gives up. Gabriela Vasconcelos versus Barbora Baichiova. I know both ladies, but I can't predict this match. It's difficult for me to even analyze because I don't compete in women's arm wrestling. I've pulled a little with Gabby, but I honestly can't comment. Sandris Shedis versus Rustam Babaya. These are contrasting styles. Sandris won't go inside against Rustam. The safe approach for Sandris is to get on Rustam's hand, which isn't easy. Rustam pulls with high knuckles crashing down onto your wrist. He doesn't use his hand strength, he uses his lat and back to jab down on your wrist. It's tough to stop. If Sandris can stop it and hook Rustam, he has a chance, but it's still slim. Rustam has been off for a few years, so he may not be the same as 10-15 years ago. I'd love to see it go wrist to wrist for Rustam to use his power. If Sandris stonewalls him with a high hand top roll and Rustam can't get in, it won't be as enjoyable. Dave Chafee versus Gabor Bada Dukat. Dave Chafee, in my mind, is still top of the heap if he's healthy. He's one of the top guys. I'd love to see him pull the winner of Jerry and Levan. He struggles with his hand and wrist and gets worn out, but as far as pure horsepower, side pressure and strength off the go, there's no one as strong as Dave. I don't know Gabor, but if he's able to do anything with Chafee, kudos to him. Lachlan Adair versus Lars Rehrbachen. Lachlan has definitely gotten better. He's training like a madman. He's right there with the top guys. He had a close match with Krasimir Kostadinov. Lars lost to Michael Todd and Matt Mask. I don't know where this one is going. Lachlan probably won't attack Lars's wrist, so Lars's flop wrist press won't be a factor. It will come down to who has the stronger arm. With two shoulder rollers, it's about confidence and timing. Who gets there first? I think it's a close match. It's about who is brave enough to put it all out there first. Matt Mask versus Marcio Barboza. They've pulled before. Matt has the advantage in frame, size, hand, and top roll. Marcio is more aggressive, relies on speed, and hits hard. If Marcio is aggressive and keeps his hand from being turned and hits his posting toe roll perfectly, Matt will go down. But if he doesn't, Matt has the advantage. If it goes inside, Marcio wins easily. Matt isn't as strong or stable inside. He relies on his long arm, hand strength, and size for his top roll. 
Matt risks being flash pinned by Marcio, who depends on proper wrist positioning, hammer strength, and pulling with high knuckles. A dangerous style for Matt. Corey West versus Tobias Sporong. Tobias is a big long guy with a great top roll. Corey is one of the most difficult guys to top roll, so Tobias might have a problem. If Tobias can't top roll Corey, I see Corey winning. Even when Corey has control in first rounds, he can get worn down, like against Alex Kircha. Tobias needs to be ready for that. Corey's hand and wrist are still ridiculous to deal with. I'm gonna give Corey the edge. I have to root for the home team. Paul Lin versus Krasimir Kostadino. Based on last matches, you'd think Paul has the advantage. Paul is more explosive and dangerous off the start, but Krasimir is more of an endurance guy, comfortable holding and staying calm, even in a losing position. Paul needs to decide if he wants to be super aggressive and go full throttle, which wears you out, or maintain a good position, outlast Krasimir, and occasionally blast when Krasimir is out of position. If Paul goes in full throttle, it might be dangerous if Krasimir stops him. Paul just has to know that if he's not pinning easily, he has to go into long distance mode. Kevin Palco versus Joseph Maranto. I know how strong Joseph is. If I'm not careful with him, he pins me. So it depends. He's extremely strong inside, ridiculously strong. I don't know how well he can defend a top role. He's a bit smaller than me, but ridiculously strong almost on the level of Daniel Prokopsiak. I'm assuming he's fairly new to the sport. I've only seen him for the last two to three years. I don't know who set up this match, but he's definitely worthy of a high-level match.